Um, so Terry, you're here to promote uh, your new film, The Zero Theorem. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the film? Oh, it's uh, less than two hours long. That's a good thing. So if you're busy, if you're busy and you've got to rush out and tweet, this is the film for you. <laughs> In fact, you can be tweeting during the film. We encourage as much tweeting as possible so that possibly somebody in the audience will pull a gun and shoot you, which is always good for promoting a film. Absolutely. <laughs> That bit of press, you know. Uh, those boys in Texas don't tweet while, while they're watching the movie, <laughs> especially the old ones. Uh, what is the zero? The zero theorem is really about a man who is trying to disassociate himself, to disconnect in a connected world. A man who's curious, he wants solitude because he's also a very selfish man who's waiting for a phone call uh, that will give, tell him the meaning of his life. And uh, he's a foolish man for that. <laughs> and unfortunately, you can't disconnect. There's too many interesting people that come knocking on the door of your disused chapel. Excellent. Um, and it's, it's kind of, a, for some people, they've, they've made the comment that it's a return to a sort of dystopian style that people might be familiar with from the, you know, the likes of And they're Brazil. completely wrong. <laughs> because it's a utopian style. What they have to understand is the world that's outside there, the streets, are happy people in colorful costumes, busy zipping around on their, on their scooters and their, and their rollerblades, and they go and work on their scooters and rollerblades. Everybody's having a wonderful time, busy shopping. Uh, so the only dystopian element is our main character. He's one man dystopia. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's trying to bring it about in, into his own way. He wants to have his own little horrible life. Exactly. Um, so one of our members asked that, uh, they said, I understand that you hired Melanie Thierry uh, on advice from Bertrand Trevonier. Mm. Uh, is that true? And, and yeah, because uh, a friend of mine, Albert Dupontel, who's a brilliant His French... name is also mentioned. Ah, really? <laughs> uh, yeah, br brilliant writer, director, actor. And, uh, and he suggested Melody. And then I saw this film that Ber Bertrand Tavernier had made with her. She was beautiful. I saw a couple others. Beautiful, sedate, intelligent. And she then sent me in a tape of Bainsley. And suddenly Bainsley was sexy and wild and dangerous. And uh, I thought, she's fantastic. And so I think my only direction to Melanie was, you know, think of Marilyn Monroe and Judy Halliday, put them together <laughs> in one babe. And she's a great actress. And she's just, I'm, I'm, I'm madly in love with her. I mean, everybody who sees it seems to respond like that. Because she's not just what she begins as, as kind of a bimbo sex mm -hmm. babe. She's, a, you know, she's the real thing and there's real emotion, there's real intelligence there. And, uh, no, she's pretty special. Excellent. Um, the word Gilliam-esque has entered into cinephile vocabulary. So it says here. Who, who um, writes this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> One of our members by the name of Jojo3000. Well, good for him. Yeah. Um, so is there a film that you didn't direct that you would call Gilliam-esque? Oh, that's, that's, that's strange, too. Well, I, I, I would like to say Delicatessen was Gilliam-esque, but they weren't looking at my films, they were just back to the same source, comic books. Hmm. And that was, you know, Delicatessen, do you remember that one? I haven't seen it, oh, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. There's a man who's seen this it. This one, yeah. yeah. Delicatessen's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, Jean-Jacques Jean Aino. Jean now, what am I saying, Jean-Jacques? Jean-Pierre Jeunet. And his brother at that stage as well. He directed it along with Marc Caro. And he went on to make Amelia, or mm -hmm. Jean, or Jean, Jean Pierre, or Jean. <laughs> it's all Jean, French to me. Jean de Vierge, <laughs> uh, or Jean Miro, or uh, Jean Dujardin, uh, all the Jeans. Um, yeah, that was one that I thought would, you could consider as Gilliam esque. I don't consider any of my films. Mask. <laughs> you mentioned comics there, but a few people asked us about um, the work that you had initially done on a Watchmen yeah. film, Alan Moore's piece. Um, I suppose, how far did you get with it and did you see the eventual release um, of the film and, and what did you make of it? Yeah, we, um, Joel Silver uh, sort of said he had got the rights to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Charles McEwen and I, after uh, Baron Munchausen, wrote a script. It was a script preceding us by Sam Hamm. We kind of 
push it aside and try to do our own. It was very frustrating because trying to condense the watch of it into two and a half hours is an impossibility, basically. And so, in many ways, the fact that Joel wasn't able to get the financing for it was a kind of relief. And Alan Moore, you know, basically, because I talked to Alan, and he said, well, I'd rather you fuck it up than me. <laughs> uh, and, and then when I saw Zack Snyder's version, I thought it looked great, and it started out really well, and then it suffered for the very reasons that it was trying to squeeze yeah, the book into this very... It's too big of a concept yeah. and a story. It should have been a five-part TV series yeah, or something. It's, then it's, I'd maybe have maybe loved if it. HBO had picked it up or done something like yeah. that. Maybe they ought to, because the characters have to have the room to expand, otherwise they're just comic book characters. Mm -hmm. And that's not what The Watchmen is about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, we've had a good few questions as well about Don Quixote. Ah, oh, yes. And kind of where it's been, how it's been, and, and the various stages of it throughout uh, the last number of years. Well, the reason Zero Theorem is with us today is because a year and a half ago, Quixote died again, fell mm -hmm. off the horse. Thought we were there, and uh, and so jumped onto zero theorem. Um, we've got a start date at the end of September this year. Oh, very good. We'll see what happens. Looking forward to it. I'm delighted. Fingers crossed. Once just, again. I've, been, I've been in Spain uh, a couple of times recently, mm -hmm. looking at locations. I, each time we approach it, we rework the script. Yeah. It's the same story. It just changes. Yeah. It gets smaller to fit the likely budget these sure, days. Sure. Um, and this time we'll be shooting part of it on the Canary Islands where you get great tax relief. <laughs> the, the Canaries give great tax relief. <laughs> that makes it easier, right? That's for sure. Um, let me see. Uh, I'll try and pick some of our better ones because I know we're kind of short on time. Two more um, questions, sorry. Pardon me? Two more. Two more questions. Oh, I'm going to have to pick two of the best. Real quick one. Yeah. Um, are you a fan of Adam Curtis? He's an English filmmaker. Who's, who's Adam Curtis? He's an English it's filmmaker. He's, he's, uh, his he best done? known work is Century of the Self, which nope. is uh, about, no. about the, the rise of kind of public relations based on um, Freud's sort of analysis. No. One to look for, so. What about Neil Stevenson? Can we talk about Neil Stevenson? We can talk about Neil Stevenson. I'm reading, do, you know, do you read his stuff? I've read some of his stuff, yeah. yeah. I'm reading Diamond Age now, which one of his, is one of his earlier ones. He's, He's breathtaking. Yeah. yeah, he's an incredible. He's writer. one of the great yeah. writers out the, there. The sort of stories that he true polymath. Yeah, and <clears throat> storyteller and everything. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. I'm afraid we're going to have to cut it there. Oh, but I've got so many answers You've waiting. So to I've got, still got so, out many, here. so many questions. I have the answer to the meaning of life. Yeah, I have uh, the answer to how much did zero theorem cost. <laughs> how long did it take to shoot? And, what do you think of working with Christoph Waltz? When did you first meet? I have the answers to all those questions, but unfortunately we've run out of time. Right now, the only question I'm going to ask you is, are you prepared to receive your award in about two minutes? Oh, no, I've not got my frock on. I was going to wear something really lovely, something off the shoulder for the award giving ceremony. Unfortunately, they're dragging me down in my working clothes. Terry, yeah. <laughs> right, thank you so much for your time. Really Cheers. appreciate it. <laughs>